Imagine you're in Alaska in the dead winter, and you're landing on this remote island on a beach, and the bush pilot tells you, I hope you guys catch a few deer. I'll come back in a few days to pick you guys up. Now, this is a true story. I was an art student in college. My buddy from Alaska invited me to come up to go hunting. So the first thing I land, get on the beach, I'm just caught with the beautiful panorama. I'm just going, this is majestic. And I'm saying to myself, this is what I'm studying. I'm studying art, and this is what I need to hone in, this beauty, and transform it into a painting. My buddy taps me on the back and says, oh no, we're going hunting. Get your bag, and we're marching into the snow. So we're doing that, and soon I'm starting to realize that actually being an artist is actually more like a hunter. And when you're a hunter, you have to hone in your senses. You have to make your eyesight better. You have to hear better. You have to smell better, taste better. And overall, trust your instinct that your gut is right in pursuing that path of finding that game you're looking for. And also be safe enough that a grizzly doesn't get you. So with that notion, uh, later I found myself starting to work with the glass artist, Dale Chihuly. And the first thing he would ask us to do, he said, don't come into the studio. I want you to go to a hotel lobby, a restaurant, a coffee shop, and basically sit down and think. He was a true believer in deep thinking, and he believed that it was not an innate skill that only talented people had. It was something that you honed in, you practiced. And he wanted us to do it first thing in the morning. He would wake up at 4.30. He wanted us to be in by 5.30. And we would go and sit in, the lo in these lobbies taking notes. No cell phones, nothing of that sort. So with, with that kind of deep thinking, we're starting to per, you know, push the boundaries of, of all these utilitarian fragments that are around us that kind of uh, curtail our thinking, get in the way. And he wanted to free us from that. And I think artists are always thinking, how can I free my thinking that I can go beyond the typical things that are in front of me? We hear this phrase, think outside the box. And even artists get trapped in that box. So practice. He believed that was the way to go. One of my favorite sculptors uh, is Richard Serra. Some of you probably heard of that name. If you go to the Olympic Sculpture Park, he has these huge uh, metal, corten steel, wave-like forms that are standing there. Now, he was looking for a new language. He wanted to find a form that didn't exist in nature. So he talked with his architect friend, Frank Gehry. He didn't know how to do it. He talked with mathematicians. They couldn't come up with the calculations to do these waveforms that he was trying to achieve. So he had to find a new way, and that new way was actually remarkably simple. He basically used his hand and eye, eye coordination. He got a piece of paper, started cutting it out, folding it, and um, using his drawing skills, and he came up with this form. So next time, when you get a chance, walk through this huge steel core 10 structure and experience. It's, it's quite amazing uh, uh, experience, I think. And I think it's these kind of um, permissions that we give ourselves. We don't give ourselves enough permission to say, I can be creative. We don't give ourselves enough permission to think deeply. We're so fragmented. We're encouraged to multitask. And all these things sound wonderful, but really, are they? And that's the part that I feel that um, when Pablo Picasso once said, all artists are born as an artist. All children are born as an artist. The problem is how to remain one once you grow up. And so we have these innate skills to be creative. If you look at a toddler, they're already um, jumping out of a crib. They're on the floor putting things in their mouth to feel out the world. And it's that kind of um, uh, curiosity. And the curiosity asking questions. And the questions become another question. And that becomes an inspiration. And the inspiration becomes the tool for creativity. So I welcome you to think inside the box when you need to but also think outside the box when you wish to. Thank you.